What's up, guys? It's your boy, Knowledge of J, back at it again. Haven't seen y'all in a minute, but I'm back, y'all. All right, we're talking about Hannibal today, so let's just get right into it, man. I know y'all been waiting for this. All right, to start it off, we're going to ask the question, who was Hannibal and where was he from? And was he, without a shadow of a doubt, a black African? Hannibal Barker, son of Hamilcar Barker, was one of the greatest generals Africa has seen. Hannibal was born in Carthage, which is present-day Tunisia. Hannibal's father, Hamilcar, was a powerful warrior who was held in high regard. He was a political leader of Carthage and led and won the 23-year First Punic War against Rome from 264 to 221 BCE. He received a very high rank in the Carthaginian army and amassed wealth and gained family connections. Hamilcar had a job to restore Carthage to his former glory and he wanted his son Hannibal to have it also. Where he lived in Carthage, it is believed that the Carthaginians were descendants of the Phoenicians, a black people who had a great reputation for being merchants. They traded with people from the likes of the Indians, the Mediterranean, and Sicily Isles. The Phoenicians had wealth and lived a luxury lifestyle, and the Romans took advantage of that. Now, according to J.A. Rogers in his work, World's Great Men of Color, Volume 1, he states, Rome, then in the prime of her youth, had concentrated on military power. Her fleet also dominated the Mediterranean. Now reaching out for world supremacy, she demanded Sicily from Carthage as an appetizer. When Carthage refused, the First Punic War followed in which Carthage lost Corsica and Sardina to Rome. Carthage forgot her defeat and continued her commerce, but there was one citizen to whom it was all Asgal. Hamilcar Barker, the Lightning. Determined on revenge, he, ar- he aroused his lethargic fellow citizens with his oratory and raised a large force. Attacking the Romans, he won a series of brilliant victories on land and sea. When Hamilcar gathered his troops and strength into Spain, before he left, he sacrificed to the gods, and there with him was his son Hannibal, who was only nine years old at the time. Him and his father would play out battles against the Romans. Through that and training, he wanted to go along with his father and place his hands around his father's neck, telling him he wanted to fight. Hamilcar then gave in, and Hannibal then proceeded to kneel in front of his father and pledge his hatred towards the Romans. Hamilcar later died by drowning when he attempted to cross the river in 228 BC. Hannibal's brother, Hasdrubal the Handsome became the leader responsible for the Carthaginians. Later in 221 BC, Hasdrubal was murdered by an angry citizen of a country he had offended in some way. Hannibal was born in 247 BC, and when he was old enough, he led an army to Rome. Robin Walker's book, when we ruled, he states in 219 BC, Hannibal, perhaps the best known personality in Carthaginian history, see Saguntum in Spain. Polybus, the Roman historian, report army like a storm cloud about to break within the sight of the center of Rome. End quote. Hannibal was then going towards Avignon, France. Some of his men took fright of taking journey, so in response, he said that Hannibal sent back 10,000 of them. Along the journey, he crossed the Pyrenees and went east till he reached the River Rhone. The river, the Rhone River, is a deep river that moves quick and swiftly, and there was a gang of adversaries on the other side. But Hannibal had a plan. One of his trusted aides, Hanno, and gave him 10,000 men and commanded him to go across the river some miles up. While the enemies crossed to fight Hannibal, Hannibal's men attacked from the rear and the enemies got confused and they were able to secure an easy victory. Hannibal and his army went south towards Massilia to take the Romans captive. They were on their way to Italy, but Rome had planned for them. 
Hannibal had a choice to go back to Spain or continue to go to war with Rome. And he chose to go to war with Rome. When he crossed the Alps, like I said before, now when he crossed the Alps, many of his soldiers were ill-prepared for the Alp Mountains. While there was a narrow pass that one of, Roman, of Rome's allies, the Alborgos, was guarding it. But Hannibal had other options. He noticed that over the course of a couple of days, the guards left each night and returned early in the mornings. He and his men left early one of the mornings and they arrived at the heights before the Al Alborgos did and he sent for his men to come up. But unfortunately, there were enemies that flanked them as Hannibal's men came up. He somehow turned the dire situation of his men being put off the cliff by the adversaries into a W. But the dilemma they were facing did not end. Ascending the mountain, there were other groups of people that deceived him and attacked him when they were acting friendly when they wasn't, which resulted in him losing more men. On November 15, 218 BC, they finally reached their destination and Hannibal's original 70,000 men turned into 20,000. His men on horseback, 6,000, was left out, was left out of 12,000. Now this is where the story is really good, guys. Let's make sure y'all like, share, subscribe for this. They were still heading to Rome with the troops that were still left. Rome got news of them and, got, and put together 80,000 troops, the largest army in its history. Rome's commander, Scipio, was confident that his army will win. This is what Scipio said to his men. These Africans are but the resemblances, nay, rather, the shadows of men being worn out with hunger, cold, dirt, and filth, and bruised and enfeebled among stones and rocks. Their joints are frostbitten, their sinews stiffened with the snow, their limbs withered by the frost, their armor battered and shivered, their horses lame and powerless. With such cavalry, with such infantry, you will have to fight. Indeed, you will not have enemies in reality, but rather their last remains. Moreover, we have beaten these miserable Carthaginians by land and sea often before. Now they have had the territory to cross the Alps, but they won't be strong enough to return over it. We have them in a trap. What I do fear is that victory is going to be so cheap that the world is not going to give us credit for it. <laughs> Hannibal was in a very vulnerable position. He told his soldiers that he led them to plunder so it's up to them if they won or died trying. Hannibal got the idea to bring the prisoners of war to the Alps with the weapons they fought with. He offered the captives who were willing to fight to the death horses, arms, and money to take them to their homes again in honor. They agreed and fought their friends and, and comrades to the death, and Hannibal kept his word on what he said. After he told his men, you are like these captives, shut in on every side. Behind you are the Alps, before you the Romans and the river. Your only hope is battle and victory, and victory will not be difficult. Think of the splendid and prosperous career before you. It will conduct you to Rome, second in wealth only to Carthage. These are great treasures to be divided among us if we win. If we lose, we are lost, for there is no place of safety we can reach by flight. We must win. In J. Rogers, where he stated, Zypio reached Hannibal at Ticino and confident victory hurled his entire force at him. But Hannibal, who had carefully studied the ground, so arranged his men that the Romans would attack him in a body. And when they were bunched together, he let his loose he let loose his armored elephants on them, trampling them and throwing them into disorder. Behind the elephants came his terrible African swordsmen to complete the slaughter. The Romans, panic-stricken, fled. The Carthaginians, in pursuit, cut them down ruthlessly. 
Saipio badly wounded was saved from capture by his son, later the famous Saipio Africanus the Elder. Rome, now in shock, rounded up more soldiers. Now, even though Hannibal was outnumbered, he was still in good position. The Italians came to him and drew the Romans to the marsh and killed them, including the commander Sempronius. This led to Hannibal getting all of North Italy. Rome met up with the Numidians at Lake Trasimeno. The Numidians cut off their retreat. Hannibal and his allies in the Spanish and Gauls started attacking the Romans' flank. At, at the end of that battle, the Romans lost 25,000 men and Hannibal lost 1,500. The Romans later gave their power to Fabius, who was the person who started the war. He decided that Rome shouldn't accept battles with Hannibal and that the best course of action was just to delay him. Because of this, Fabius became known as the Contactor, which basically means procrastinator. This method towards Hannibal obviously didn't work, and it actually worked in Hannibal's favor. They started to violate Italy. The Romans casted Fabius out of power and placed two new generals in power named Varro and Emulus, and they switched being leader every other day. They headed north with nearly 100,000 men. Hannibal and his 50,000 men retreated when they confronted them. Right before being confronted, one of his top generals named Giscon made negative remark when he saw the Romans. Bull laughed and said, there's something you haven't thought of. There's not a single man with all that army named Giscon. Everyone laughed and they believed in themselves again. So the strategy that Hannibal used is what puts him in the history of one of the greatest military strategists. Hannibal knew that he couldn't win by brute force, so he had the idea of placing his weakest soldiers in the center and putting his seasoned warriors on the wing. Quoting Rogers again, the battle began on the bright June morning in 216 BC. The Romans, driving down on the Carthaginians, struck full in the center as Hannibal had anticipated. Finding little resistance there, they pushed on inward, sure of victory, but their ranks were broken. The effect was precisely that of one who hurls himself against the door he believes is locked to find that it isn't. When the Romans had thus penetrated far enough, Hannibal sent his African infantry in solid formation to attack them on both flanks while his cavalry galloped to the rear to attack, him, to attack them there. The Romans thus surrounded were slaughtered like sheep. Their blood changed the water of the Afudius to crimson. Emulus was slain and with him 80 Roman senators and 70,000 men. Hannibal was now a master of all Italy, except the capital, and that in only two years. For the next 13 years, Hannibal ruled over Italy. He had became a legend there. Hannibal would frighten the capital again and attempt to besiege the city again. Even when he would get close, somebody would cry out, Hannibal at the gates. And at that, the Romans would peer nervously over the walls, thinking he was about to attack them again. Before he died, he had fled to Bithynia and stayed with the king there. The Romans wanted him to surrender. Hannibal with a ring on his finger had poison and decided at the age of 61 that it was it came to an end and Hannibal was dead. In his death, Hannibal's reputation increased. As like any other celebrity, even today. Now we're going to get into the question if Hannibal was black. There are many depictions of Hannibal that are different. There's a coin that have characteristics of an African. Where the coin was found was where he was victorious. Also, the coin was made in that era. That usually only made for people that are important, and Hannibal seemed like a pretty important person to me. So I don't believe it's it's 
I feel as though it's not a stretch to believe that this could be a accurate depiction depiction of Hannibal. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. Thank you guys for watching. I know it's been a while since I dropped my last video. Just make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe if you're new, even if you're old, man. Um, this is Knowledge of J, and I'm out.